Hi everyone, today I'll be explaining everything that I can about the arm of a squid. Now, the first thing that comes to mind when you tell people about the squid is their many tentacles, but this is a misconception, as what people are thinking of is this. But this isn't a tentacle, this is an arm. The main thing that separates a squid arm from a squid tentacle is the different functions and shape. I'll be covering the tentacle in a different video. The arm of a squid looks kind of like an elongated pyramid. If you were to take a cross section of a squid arm, it would look normally like a squished triangle with the suckers on the base. The squid has two rows of suction cups lining the underneath of the arm from the tip to the base. The suction cups allow the squid to grab onto things and prevent their escape. The arm is able to move wherever the squid wants it to, as the squid has no bone restrictions and the arm is supported in the water. An average squid has eight arms surrounding its head, and they are grouped into pairs. You can tell which arm belongs to what pair by placing the squid with the funnel side, aka the ventral side, down. The top two arms are in pair one, the two below pair one is pair two, then three, then four. The tentacles of the squid aren't included in these pairings. I am assuming that the first pair is the dorsal pair, the second pair is the dorsal lateral pair, the third pair is the ventral lateral pair, and the fourth pair is the ventral pair. The squid uses its arms to grab things and keep prey still so it can eat it. This is universal over all cephalopods and is quite obvious. What might not be so obvious is that depending on the species, either one or both of the arms in the fourth pair are a hectocotylus. A hectocotylus is a specialized arm that only males have and is used in mating. Although some species might not even have slash use a hectocotylus and have other means for mating. Squid are able to regenerate lost limbs. They have been known to grow back arms that have been severed, and they are able to do the same with the hectocotylus. The arm is basically identical to the one it lost. I couldn't find any sources stating how fast a squid can regenerate an arm, so if you find a source or two that does, please say so and provide a link in the comments. Because there are so many squid species, over 300 different species, there are many different arm shapes and sizes. An example of an interesting arm is of the Japanese flying squid, who has a flap of skin on the side of the arm, no doubt to help it glide. Another example of an odd arm is a hectocotylus from the Indian Ocean squid. The frills on the end of the arm replace suction cups and are used in the reproduction process. The last arm I am going to show you is a colossal squid arm. These huge squid have hooked suction cups on their arms, as well as normal toothed suction cups. This allows an extremely firm grip on prey. And there you have it! All the things I could put together to teach you about the arm of a squid. The internet doesn't have many articles with reliable info, so I'm sorry if the video was too short. If you couldn't tell, this is the first episode of the Squid Anatomy series. In this series, I will teach you guys about all the different parts of the squid. I hope you learned something from this video, and if you enjoyed it, then please give it a like. Please comment any suggestions for future videos you might have, as I do read the comments on videos. If you want to see more squid-related videos when they come out, then feel free to subscribe to my channel. Also, this is the first video of 2018, woohoo! All my sources are in the description. Keep a lookout for my next video, and remember to keep exploring.